Welcome back, everybody. Investors are typically drawn to munis because they're tax exempt and often have a pretty high yield status, pretty boring, reliable. But Refinitiv Lipper is showing outflows of $220 million this week, $635 million last week. And now that the Inflation Reduction Act has passed, there could be more headwinds ahead for this piece of the fixed income universe, like deteriorating credit, the minimum uh, tax rate, and poor technicals. Let's just end this segment before we even start. Tom Koslick is head of Muni Strategies and Credit at Hilltop Securities. Tom, what's going on? Yeah, thanks for having me, Kelly. I appreciate it. So, you know, one of the things that I spend a good amount of time, you know, not just in the last year or two, but over the years doing, is explaining to our clients, uh, you know, based on the things that are coming out of Washington, the sequestration that the 2017 Tax Act, you know, how those types of events are going to positively or negative impact, negatively impact public finance, right? Fiscal policy in the last year and a half has absolutely had a impact. The Rescue Plan Act was very positive. I mean, that is one of the reasons of why it is that I've been talking about this golden age of public finance, because there's there was $650 billion that came out of that Rescue Plan Act last year that is flowing directly to public finance entities. But then again, the infrastructure package that passed last year really was kind of a credit neutral. But where the Inflation Reduction Act is concerned, I'd say that is shaping up to be kind of a dud. I mean, to tell you the truth, if not, and that might even be uh, understating it because the tax policy that was included in that, that 15% corporate tax rate, uh, that there was an inadvertent, uh, I think, way that is going to limit participation of some large banks and large insurance companies and that's mm. in tax exempts and that's not necessarily going to be a good thing for municipals. That's a really interesting point. Let me go back uh, to what you said that basically you're going to you're becoming more concerned now about state and local finances post pandemic. You think the pension issues are going to come back to the fore? Mm -hmm. So uh, I still uh, I, there's a very positive credit landscape right now, but I would not describe that positive credit landscape as being structural. It's not structurally positive. It's not necessarily going to continue year to year. The numbers are going to look good this year. The numbers are going to look, look good la next year. The reason for that is because of all that federal money. So what I'm concerned about, what I'm talking to investors about right now, is I want them to trade out of some of the state and local governments that have you know, a lot where their pension liabilities are larger than what they should be. That's one of the big things that I'm talking to investors about right now before before cre the credit landscape really deteriorates. And that's obviously top of mind. A lot of people own this stuff. I mean, there are parts of the market you think will continue to do well. You actually like mass transit and transportation. You like health care. Is that yeah, right? And, and that and, and that's a that's a little bit of an against the grain call, to tell you the truth, because sure. there's so much there's so much headline risk right now about transportation, the future of work and how transportation and mass transit is going to react. The numbers still don't look good. Uh, but I think what's going to end up happening where mass transit and transportation is concerned is I think that uh, there are going to be solutions for funding. And I and I really like going against the grain on that one. One of the other things that I really like is kind of mid tier health care. That's another place where I think uh, municipal investors can find some additional yield. Do you overall, so we know we started this year with a very challenged performance in the asset class. Now we have rates starting to go back up again that, you know, nearing 3% on the 10 year. I mean, do you expect this performance to dip back in the red uh, in the months ahead? I think that there's going to be some volatility where that's concerned. Uh, that being said, when you compare where we, the, the absolute level of where we are now and where we're likely to be over the next three to six months compared to where we were in January and February, I really like where we are, where yields are concerned. And most of the municipal investors that I'm talking to are looking at this from a more long-term horizon. And so they, they really like where yields are kind of on a relative basis. All right, Tom, we'll leave it there. Great to check in with you. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Kelly. Tom Koslick with Hilltop. Still ahead, rising food prices hitting lower end consumers particularly hard. It's changing where and how much they spend. That could actually be helping this stock, the name and why, next. Also, take a look at shares of Occidental Petroleum. U.S. regulators have authorized Berkshire Hathaway to buy up to 50% of its common stock. Berkshire filed an application with FERC, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, back in early July for permission mission to make this purchase. We know they've been involved with the shares for quite some time. Axie is now up six and a half percent on news that Berkshire could buy up to 50 percent of the company. We're back after this. Muni Money is sponsored by BAM. Help build America's future with BAM insured Muni bonds.
The New Deal created American infrastructure that unleashed new opportunity. Today, we're doing it again with massive investment in modernizing our infrastructure to build for tomorrow. At Build America Mutual, we protect your municipal bond investments that help make it happen. Building a vibrant future for our communities and your portfolio. Invest in the future of America with BAM Insured Bonds.